Matthew chapter 27. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? See thou to that. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. And the chief priests took the silver pieces and said, It is not lawful for to put them into the treasury, because it is the price of blood. And they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Wherefore that field was called the field of blood unto this day. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him that was valued, whom they, the children of Israel, did value, and gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord appointed me. And Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus said unto him, Thou sayest. And when he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Then said Pilate unto him, Hearest thou not how many things they witness against thee? And he answered him to never a word, insomuch that the governor marveled greatly. Now at that feast, the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. And they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. When he was sat down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said unto them, whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all said unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why, what evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and all our children. Then released he Barabbas unto them. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after that they had mocked him, they took the robe off from him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. And as they came out, they found a man of Sarinai, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross. And when they were coming to a place called Golgotha, that is to say, a place of a skull, they gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall. And when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him, and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there, and set up over his head his accusation, written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then there were two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand, and another on the left. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads, and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple, and buildest it in three days, save thyself. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross.
Likewise also the chief priests, mocking him with the scribes and elders, said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. The thieves also, which were crucified with him, cast the same in his teeth. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there, when they heard that, said, This man calleth for Elias. And straightway one of them ran, and took a sponge, and filled it with vinegar, and put it on a reed, and gave him to drink. The rest said, Let be. Let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. Hey, Shalom. All praises to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Bashem, Rakakodash, much mercy to you brothers out there, the true house of David, all you brothers that are actually in the spirit and that can actually understand this covenant. Uh, I wanted to go over this real quick um, where I left off yesterday, um, going into them trying to. Uh, cover the cave where the Lord was was uh, where where they put him in. So what I want to do, uh, let's continue right here. Uh, Matthew twenty seven and fifty four says, "Now the centurion and they that were with him watching the anointed." saw the earthquake and those things which were done they feared god greatly saying truly this was the son of power so it was after the after he died in the earthquake and the temple ran in twain and all these things start happening they knew that that was the son of god it says many women were beholding afar off which followed jesus to galilee ministering unto him and among which was mary magdalene the the uh, and Mary, the mother of James, and and Joseph, and uh, Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's children. When even was come, there came a rich man of Arimathea named Joseph, which who also was Jesus' disciple. And when and he went to Pilate and begged for the body of the anointed. And then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen. Right. So you got to understand, too, when it when uh, when they said, let his blood be on us and our children. They were choosing the murderer over the Lord, man. So you have a generation of guys that curse. And they're going to cling to murderers and false prophets and, and they're going to worship idols and they're going to worship men. The majority of our people, they rejected the Lord. Now, this is when the Lord said uh, men that they're condemned already. A lot of guys have been condemned. So what we have in this time, you have to watch men's doctrine. If men are holding you to the old law. If men are teaching against the Gentiles, if men are telling you you're not in the covenant, that you have to wait on this and that and this, these guys are opposed and they are actually against the Lord in this time. You have This is what you have to understand. Men are set up against the Lord. I think I've just seen a video, uh, you know, a glance at it, but uh, the, he said the, the, the Greek, the Phoenician lady or whatever, she was a, a Israelite. And when you go to Mark, uh, when the Lord healed that uh, Gentile's daughter, that was clearly it tells you that she was a Gentile. So it's just like when that other guy said that hell is not biblical. These guys are 
are blatantly teaching against the Lord and the, the, the covenant and they're teaching against uh, the, the, the new covenant and they're teaching against the Lord blatantly. And a lot of you guys, certainly you guys that say you're teaching the new covenant, you're against the Lord because you're teaching man the old law. If you don't understand the doctrine of the new covenant, man, you need to go study. But a lot of you guys are just opposition. The scriptures say that this this uh, generation is uh, a perverse and a cursed generation that seek for a sign. So these guys need to see somebody to worship. They need to see idols. They need to see angels and shit. You see, <laughs> they need to see things. They don't have no faith. All right. This is why guys, they can't let go of these carnal garments. So it's heavy at this point. These guys are against the Gentiles and they are against their teaching false doctrine. It's right in your face. These elders and all these guys in these camps. It is, it is, it is out there now. It's blatant. Matthew 27 and 60 and laid upon on his tomb which he had hewn in the rock and rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher and departed it and there was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary sitting over across the sepulcher and the next day they followed for the preparation and the chief priests and the Pharisees came together unto Pilate saying sir we remember that deceiver see they was calling the lord a deceiver and what are you guys calling us brothers that's teaching this new, new covenant deceivers were devils were bugged out so they called the lord a deceiver it says saying sir we, we remember that that deceiver said while he was yet alive after three days i will rise again Command, therefore, that a sepulcher be made sure unto the third day, lest these disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people, he is risen from the dead. So shall the last era be, wor be worse than the first. Pilate said unto him, ye have a watch, go your way, make it sh as sure as you can. So they made a sepulcher sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. So that stone they put a stone in front of the the cave all right and it's heavy because these guys like to call themselves stones they're not they're not meaning stones as the cornerstone of your house tribe because they reject the covenant and they reject the lord's doctrine they reject having love for the gentiles they reject the doctrine of the new covenant they they hate their enemies they hate esau and remember the lord said love your enemies so these guys are totally adverse to the scriptures elders camps all these camps that's why you have to come out of these false prophet camps if you guys are meaning you guys that don't come out of these camps in these last days and don't really repent that mean that you're you you were the ones that said let his blood be on us and our children because you're showing that you were cursed and you were with caiaphas you were with the synagogues teaching the doctrine against the lord Rejecting the doctrine of the new covenant and accepting the, the synagogue doctrine. It's heavy. Now, this is heavy, man. So they put a stone in front of the the uh, the sepulcher where the Lord was. Because carnally, they thought they was going to keep the Lord in the cave. So it's just like that in this time. Carnally, you got all these camps set up. It's stones trying to hold men from the new covenant and actually believing that's what this is about matthew 28 and one it says in the end of the sabbath it was at the beginning down toward the first day of the week came mary magdalene and the other mary to see the sepulcher behold there was a great earthquake and an angel descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it Woo! so an angel rolled back that big ass stone this is what's happening in this time. You guys that think you're in the way and stopping men from getting to the new covenant or stopping men from believing and teaching this false doctrine, you, you really think that you're going to stand in the way. That's why the scripture says right here, let's read it, Matthew 23. They stand in front of the kingdom of heaven trying to stop men from going in and they can't go in themselves. It's heavy, bro. Matthew 23 and 13, but one to you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites. So you really see this is what's happening in this time. You brothers that are in the spirit, all these guys 
that are trying to hold you to the old law, that are teaching against the Gentiles, that are teaching against the new covenant, telling you it ain't no hell. They say hell ain't biblical. These are all heresies. At this point, people know that these guys are teaching heresies. Now, it's on you guys to come out on your own. A lot of you guys are going to suffer the same fate as these false prophets. Because you didn't want to come out of the synagogue. You wanted to you wanted to die with these false prophets that's teaching false doctrine. And hold man to the old law. All you reprobates. Matthew 23 and 13. But warn to you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites. For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. So they, they in that sense, in Matthew 28, they put that stone in front of the cave. They were trying to stop the Lord from coming out. And this is the same thing that they're doing. But what do you scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites? For you set up the kingdom of heaven against men. Neither you go in yourself. Neither ye suffer them that are entering to go in. Right. So they didn't even want the Lord to come out. So they don't want nobody coming into this new covenant, really. They don't want nobody really believing the new covenant or really understanding this, really. So that's why you got these guys set up. All right. And then we're giving you the eyes to see these guys, man. They're all corrupt. Every one of them. So the angel rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. So this is letting you know that you carnal guys and your camps and your groups and all you guys trying to hold men to Moses. You're not stopping anything. The spirit is rolling you guys out the way. And, and, and men that are actually up to spirit and men that actually have understanding, they see past you camps. So you're not you're not doing anything The the angels are with brothers being able to see. So you're not really doing anything. It says his countenance was like light. Now, this is the the angels countenance that rolled back that stone. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment was white as snow. It says, and for to fear him, the keepers did shake. They became dead as men. And the angel answered, said unto the woman, fear ye, <coughs> fear ye not. For I know that ye seek uh, Yahweh Shai, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said, Come see the place where the Lord lived. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. Behold, he goeth before you to Galilee. There ye shall see him. You see that? So the angel is telling you that the Lord already raised from the dead the angel told him that so this is symbolic that third day us raising on the third day this is what the lord said that this will this is what will happen so we're being raised on this third day now so we're being raised up and what do you have guys doing they're set up to hold you to the flesh luke 24 and 46 and said unto him thus it is written Thus, it behooved the anointed to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And remember that Hosea tells you that after two days, he'll revive us and he'll, on the third day, he'll raise us up. This is the prophecy of Hosea, which was being uh, fulfilled even in this time, too. Oh, let's see. Luke 9 and 22 saying the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests. These guys are rejecting the new covenant. Um, these guys, uh, Sakari, the, the, the head guy, Sakari, and these elders, they're rejecting the doctrine of the new covenant because they're rejecting the Gentiles. They're, 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 they got a doctrine against the Gentiles when the Lord was grafting the Gentiles in and that middle wall petition was broken down. But what are these guys doing? They're putting the wall back up by holding you to the old law. So every one of you guys that are holding to the old law, you are against God in this time. Luke 9 and 22 saying the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be slain and raised the third day. So the Lord is being what's what's being happening. What's happening is the Lord is being raised in this in this third day in this time. And you have guys that are set up to actually stand in front of the cave so the Lord can't come out carnally. But 
the angel showed you that it's nothing you can do to stop men from actually from the Lord from getting out from the new covenant from getting out from a certain men getting to the Lord. There ain't nothing you can do but try to carnally stand in the way and teach false doctrine. John 2 and 19. And Yahweh shall answer and said unto them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. You see? And then the Jews said, 40 and six years was this building, with this temple and building. Would thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. <laughs> Man, it, the, the Lord was speaking in a way these guys would never understand. Like these guys would never understand this new covenant it, it was never given unto these guys john um 1639 it says and this is the father's will which have sent me that of all which he have given me i should lose nothing but shall raise it up again at the last day so this is the last day now just like on that third day they tried to stop the lord from coming out this is what camps, groups, and organizations are doing. They're trying to stop the new covenant from going out and its understanding by, by, by flooding it with all this false doctrine. You guys got a heavy penalty to pay. And it's crazy because you don't even believe in hell. You guys are, are the unbelievers and the fearful. You guys are those guys. So you don't have to believe in that place that you're going to go. Because a lot of you guys have sold your soul and you have to teach men false doctrine. John 6 and 40, and that and that this and this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone would see if the son believeth on him. So this is the will of the father to believe on his son, bro. Not the old law. You guys that don't really understand it spiritually and you're holding to the old law, you're going to perish. Because we're not repenting to the old law or keeping the old laws. If you don't have faith in the Lord and his new covenant, you're going to perish, man. If you're teaching false, this, this goes for anybody. If you don't really believe in his son and you're holding men to the old law, you're going to perish. It says, and believeth on him may have everlasting life and I will raise him up in the last day. So the ones that really believe they have everlasting life and we're being raised up in this last day to understand the Lord, to teach the Lord and to help pull men a few out the fire. So if you don't have the doctrine of the Lord in this last time and you're, and you're holding the old and you're teaching against the Gentiles and you're teaching against his covenant, the angels are rolling you guys out the way. And the brothers that really need to get this understanding, we still, brothers are still going to get it no matter how many stones you put in front of the cave. So repent to the new covenant, man. You know, we're showing you brothers how to see this thing spiritually. You cannot hold the old law and believe in the Lord at the same time. It is impossible. The ones that were against the Lord, they were heavy holding that old law. And a lot of you guys, too, man, that say you teach the new covenant, you you on you playing both sides. The Lord say he's going to spew your ass out. You either be fully for the Lord or, or you fully be for Moses. The Lord don't play with that middle. Ain't no middle ground. You either other Lord or you're not. And a lot of guys are not, and they're trying to keep you from being with the Lord. But repent to the new covenant. With that, a hey, shallow wall.